Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm actually recording. Uh, okay, good. I see you. Oh, so you adjusted. <laughs> I backed up. All righty. Okay. Well, Jeff, I'll tell you what. It's your show. Tell us about your uh, publication, Fremont Outpost, and um, how people can find your work. Ah, uh, well, the Fremont Outpost is my way to bring real fake news to the masses. Not just fake news, or not just real news, but a combination. So you can find me at www.thefremontoutpost.com. And it's not going to be quite daily, but there's always information available on a variety of topics, including the very important sports section, which details a lot about our alma mater, Stanford University, and also, generally speaking, what's going on in the sporting world. Go Cardinal. Yeah. Go Cardinal. Yes. All right. Well, let's just introduce ourselves. Um, Jeff and I met in college. I've known him since the same year as the catch. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. We, were at, we were both, we were in fact sitting right in front and back of each other in Berkeley Memorial Stadium in 1982. Oh, I remember people throwing fruit right after that. Uh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> right after the play. All right, well, I'll tell you what, viewers probably want to get after the game. So what's yep. the first game you wanted to talk about? Well, this let's week talk about NFL Saturday's match. The Texas mm -hmm. showdowns are back-to-back games in Texas, and I believe the Colts and the Texans are up first tomorrow afternoon. Excellent. Okay. Well, what are your thoughts on that game? Well, I think that it, actually the Texans-Colts is the most compelling because they've played tight games this year, and I believe the Colts beat the Texans in Houston not that long ago. Right. I, uh, I like Indy. Now, this might be Stanford homerism, yeah. but um, I'm typically biased against young quarterbacks in their first playoff. And Deshaun Watson, as dynamic as the guy looks, as great as his college record was in championship games, um, I believe he's in over his head in his first postseason NFL game. I prefer Andrew Luck to Watson. I think Luck's numbers are spectacular, 39 TDs, Watson only 26 TDs. Luck has hardly been sacked this year. I think uh, Frank Reich, the uh, new coach, has a quick passing offense. That's going to take Jadavian Clowney and uh, J.J. Watt out of the game. Um, I think Indy, the underdog, covers here. Uh, it's a one-point spread. As it's we only a one-point spread, so it's basically as close to pick them as you can get. And the interesting aspect to this game is the two leading candidates for Comeback Player of the Year are opposing each other. You mentioned J.J. Watt. Right. In any other year, he would probably win, but I agree with you. I think Andrew Luck's performance after a year and a half on the shelf is fully deserving because he's put together – probably his best season and arguably one of the better seasons of any quarterback with 47 touchdown passes. And he doesn't have a Chargers or Rams or Chiefs type weaponry around him. He's, he's really done an impressive job and he's gotten better as the team has as, as the year went on. I liked your point about Frank Reich too, because I wonder what Josh McDaniels is thinking. He turned down this job. Uh, very likely because he wasn't sure if Andrew Luck would be playing again. So, I, I, to be honest, I think that Josh McDaniels with his two-year track record in Denver would not uh, be at the top of the potential coaching list, this list come anytime soon because general managers and owners are going to remember this guy walked away from a deal. And he, did, he didn't do a great job in Denver. So, I, don't, I guess he may be waiting out Bill Belichick. That being said, I just think the Colts, because they've both teams had good runs after bad starts, but I think the Colts are a very good team on the road, and they've proven they can win in Houston. And I think the experience factor, I think Luck has seen enough big games and he has enough playoff experience that I think he will play well. I think Deshaun Watson will play well also, but I, I think 
I just think the Colts are, are, are the better team right now. I think they know how to play these tough games, and I think they're going to win the game straight Yeah, up. you know, Colts only have lost once since October 21st. Right. And that was that fluke of a game against Jacksonville where they got shut out. So right. I think the Colts are hot. Marlon Mack. We talked about him off the air. Right. Um, surprisingly effective running back for the Colts. Yeah. Right. I think I think the Colts are undervalued. I like the Colts um, getting one point. Yeah. Tell I, me about. I think, I think it'll mm-hmm. be a compelling game, though. But I think the Colts can legitimately win this one. And I think Deshaun Watson. You know, the first year after an ACL injury, you know, it, you don't always have it. The, fortunately for him, the weather is going to be good. The, it's going to be good for both games in Texas, actually. Yeah, so that shouldn't be a factor. Plus, the roof may be closed down in Houston, regardless. So, yeah, I'll say too. Deshaun Watson gets sacked too often, right? Yeah. I believe we we need to mention he's a young quarterback who holds the ball right. too long, and which Andrew well, Luck used to do also, but now he's right. changed his game. Right, but you see, that's the point I'm making. These young quarterbacks have techniques early on that work in the regular season that don't work in the postseason. Andrew Luck has learned the hard way that he needs to get rid of the ball faster, right? Um, I believe both teams have A-plus, well, we'll say excellent number one receivers. There's Hopkins for the Texans. There's um, T.Y. Hilton for Luck. I think both guys have things to work with. The difference, though, is Luck, experience, he's going to be getting rid of the ball faster than Watson. Um, Watson's going to have a problem with a Colt defense that's better than what we've expected. In other words, this is the first year of the Frank Reich um, work. The Colts used to be a soft touch on defense. Correct. I believe this year, I'm not saying they're a great defense, but they're an improved defense. So I think the young quarterback's going to have a problem. The other, the other thing, Rich, too, is that uh, if you remember five years ago to the day, Luck led a tremendous comeback. So even if the Colts get off to a, a bad start, Luck knows how to come back in a playoff situation because that game, I forget how many points they were behind. They were down at oh. least three touchdowns. Was that the KC game? It was. Right. I remember that game. Right. No, Luck, Luck's a gamer. Yeah. Um, switching to the Dallas game, how do you see that one? Dallas is favored by two over Seattle. I think it really comes down to Zeke, if he has a big game where he gains over 120 yards, I think the Cowboys can control the clock. But if Zeke is contained by Seattle, I think the pressure is going to be all on Dak Prescott, and he's been very up and down this year. Very. The the X factor beyond that, I think, is uh, the Cowboys' new receiver that they got for a first-round pick. I think he, Amari Cooper could make the difference. He, he has allowed Dak Prescott to be a little bit more relaxed, and he, he's a big-game player. He's certainly played well in college, and he had his moments with the Raiders. This year, he got off to a slow start, but I think the Raiders— sinking ship had a, more to do that, with that than his own play. I think he's been getting better every week in Dallas. Dallas's defense is better, but Seattle has played some really good games. They've given the Rams a tough time. And, of course, Seattle beat Dallas earlier this year. I got to tell you, for me, you know, I, I'm fixated on quarterbacks. Yeah. And uh, as much as we praise Andrew Luck in the other game, right. uh, I love Russell Wilson, a guy mm-hmm. who – has won a Super Bowl, uh, came close to winning a second Super Bowl. I think there's a gap here. Dak Prescott, 22 touchdowns on the year. Um, If you take away his stats from their beatdown of my beloved Giants last week, Dak would have had less than 20 touchdown passes. Now, I'll agree with you. Cooper is a change, right? But I just don't consider Dak to be Russell Wilson. And I don't consider Jason Garrett to be uh, Pete Carroll, right? Because Pete, obviously, has won a Super Bowl. He's right. won a college championship. I think I think Pete's a qualitatively better coach. So I'll agree I would have preferred this game to be in Seattle. Right. I'll also agree that Seattle is 500 on the road. Okay, right. fair enough. Dallas has been great at home. Okay, great. But 
Dallas strikes me as a dysfunctional bunch. Zeke, for all the yardage gained, has only scored 60 days. Um, I get the better quarterback, the better coach, and you're giving me two points in this game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm taking the Seahawks. Also, in terms of rushing the football, right. um, Seattle actually is a potent rushing offense. In other words, as good as Dallas is running the football, Seattle is as well. I'm expecting a low-scoring game. In other words, I'm expecting both teams to try to run the yeah. football, run down the clock, and in a low-scoring game, I prefer Russell Wilson, uh, who I feel should have made the Pro Bowl. I'm surprised he didn't. I prefer Russell Wilson to Dak. So, I, so I'm going against you here. I like Seattle in this one. Oh, I think Seattle's going to win, too. Oh, I, oh, I did Okay. I'm sorry. And I think one, I agree with your points, and I think Seattle has a tremendous uh, positive differential in turnovers. I think they, they, they're, they, are, they get a lot more turnovers. They don't make a lot of mistakes. So, I, yeah, I, I was trying to think how things could go. I think unless Zeke has a tremendous game, I think Dallas is going to lose by a touchdown. I, I don't think yeah. Dak can win this game on his own. And I think Russell Wilson, with that running attack you mentioned, the play-action pass, even though Dallas has a great defense, I think their defensive backfield can be exposed if if their safeties are coming up to the line. Right. And and Dak's never won a playoff game. And while he's – while this isn't his first playoff game, I'll say um, I do feel that the playoffs are a different – animal entirely than the regular season so yep. i just feel that russell who's played in two nfc championship games and two super bowls has a decided advantage yeah I, well besides Dak, what how many playoff games has jason garrett won in his oh, eight nine ten year career yeah i i believe it's one i could be wrong yeah. but it's that yeah. Detroit lion game right i right. you know and and that game was questionable because they were down 14 nothing and, the and Lions, uh, that's, that's like their only win. Or oh, the Lions haven't won a playoff game in like 50 years or something. So <laughs> beating them isn't the greatest accomplishment of all time. Right. That's the thing. I I, I think uh, Garrett's one of these guys who has the job because he went to Dartmouth or someplace like uh, that. Yeah, uh, and good. Jerry Jerry doesn't want to pay Nick Saban type money to some Nick Saban type coach. And I believe. Jerry butted heads back in the day with Bill Parcells. Oh, he did and, for sure, right? And Jimmy right, Johnson. And Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson was, got too much credit for Jerry's liking. Right, that's exactly <laughs> right. And so I feel Jerry feels that he's made Jason. And right. Um, right, you know. And to me, I just feel more comfortable with Pete Carroll. And Carroll just got a new gig too, so he could right. be daring in the game. He doesn't have, right, you know. Uh, um, Seattle wasn't expected to make the playoffs, so they're playing with house money right now. They're a team that's probably ahead of their rebuild schedule. So, And and they've got enough experience. They, they've got players who want to win. And Russell Wilson is clearly, uh, Dak Wilson's maybe 20th best quarterback. Russell Wilson's in the top five or six. In the oh, I agree, 100%. I think this guy's an alchemist. We were talking about Luck not having a lot to work with. Uh, I know Doug Baldwin was hurt for part of the year. Who knows how Russell got to 35 touchdowns. In other words, Russell's getting a bunch of touchdowns, and you look at his wide receivers. Let's just say he's not throwing to Jerry Rice and Randy Moss, right? Well, Doug Baldwin is a Cardinal, so he's usually (laughs) a big game player. Let's face it, it's mostly Stanford guys that are – the key players in the NFL playoffs this weekend, apparently. I'll, I'll say this, though. Doug Baldwin was not close to my Pro Bowl ballot. <laughs> no, I know. I know, but he knows, I was how to make, he knows how to make catches in big games. He's been there. Oh, no, true, true. I and, think he can offset Amari Cooper somewhat, you know? Also, well, Dak he, doesn't have Jason Witten anymore, his safety valve. Mm-hmm. Well, also, Seattle's offensive line is the best it's been in three years. I mean, right. I don't know any of their players, but they Russell Wilson was running for his life the last couple of years, and this year he's had more protection. And they have a productive running game. So, the, and Dallas's line was probably the best in the league two years ago, and now they're probably top ten. But they're not the best line in the NFL any longer. Oh, I agree. I think this whole Dallas offensive line talk 
is a little bit blown out of proportion. It is. You know? Yeah. And so to me, uh, yeah, I, I'll agree the defense looks good. But, Dallas' uh, front seven is awesome. The defensive backs, it, I think that's going to be a key. If Russell Wilson can beat those guys, then it won't really matter what the – he'll get rid of the ball before the defensive linemen get to him. So Right. And, and because he's mobile in the pocket, that'll destabilize some of these secondary guys who, yeah. you know, right, the, the, the play will break down. So two games in, we're both picking underdogs for the first two. Let's, let's go to – the Los Angeles Chargers. I almost said San Diego. Yeah. Three-point dogs at Baltimore. Who do you like and why? I think the Chargers have as much talent as anybody. I think Phillip Rivers has been waiting for this moment where he has a chance. And the fact is, they don't have home field advantage. They've been a good road team because basically they play a 16-game road schedule. They don't have right. a massive crowd in Carson, California, and they've played well all year long. Just They just could never catch up to Kansas City after Kansas City started, but they've been competitive. And on both sides of the ball, they've got stars. They've got a great running game. They've got great receivers. Mm-hmm. They've got basically... The best case scenario, they have their best defensive lineman in midseason form because he's played only half the season. They have good defensive backs. I think place kicking is their only area of question mark. They've had trouble with the, with field goals, extra points, but otherwise they're as good as anybody. And I think a road game for them is is no more disadvantaged than playing at home in a soccer stadium. I think they're ready to play. Uh, and I know you want to get into this. I think I think the Philip Rivers advantage over Lamar Jackson is. The most- <laughs> I mean, Lamar Jackson All has right. played better than expected, but he's only played six or seven games, and he's never played in the the teeth of the playoffs. And I don't think being at home is going to be a huge advantage because the weather actually in Baltimore is going to be all right for this game. I think it's going to be around fifty degrees, so it's not going to be. A difference of like playing in 30 degree windy weather. Baltimore will be rocking. They've got a good defense, but they're not as good as they were. And Lamar Jackson, I think he's going to find running in a playoff game against Boza and his mates no, on the defensive line. Impossible. Right. He, he's not going to find the same success he found in the regular season running the ball. Oh, I agree with everything you said. Chargers, too, on the road, 7-1 and one this year. Right. I'll say this, too. I have a lot of respect for Baltimore's defense, but if anyone can beat a rough defense, it's a veteran quarterback. And Phillip Rivers is exactly that kind of vet. Also, I know Baltimore beat them in the regular season a few right. weeks ago. I don't take that seriously. In other words, I feel coaches will withhold plays. Right. will change their play calling because they don't want to tip their hands for this game. Also, uh, Hunter Henry, the tight end, might be back for this game. Ah. I feel that the Chargers have great wide receivers, Keenan Allen. Um, you know, Also, people like Antonio Gates, he's oh, exactly yeah. the kind of cagey vet right. who you know in a game like this is going to be open on a key play at some time. You know what I mean? And Baltimore's not going to quite know how to deal with him. So this is actually my play of the week. Oh. I can't believe the casinos are silly enough to give the Chargers three points. Right. <laughs> you know, I, you know uh, Lamar Jackson, rookie, and Chargers have won 12 games. 12. I don't care if they are the road team. Um, a 12-win team shouldn't be getting three points against a rookie quarterback. You know, plus, no one knows with certainty what's going to happen to John Harbaugh in terms of next season. Uh, and so I, you know, I really wonder, is he going to be loosey-goosey this game? Is is there a pressure, tension, overhang? Do the guys in the locker room sense that unlike Pete Carroll in the game we discussed, the Seattle game, this guy doesn't have longevity, right? right. He's rumored to be a candidate for all these other jobs. Right. So, yeah, I, I definitely like the Chargers here. That's my play of the week. So... Let's get to the last game. We've picked three underdogs. Right. So now we have... We picked, we're, we're road warriors so far. No home team has won a game yet. And I think analysis. it's a... 
it's a weird year, too, where you have a lot of young quarterbacks making their first playoff appearance. Marlo, daddy's making a video. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to the Dwyer household here. That's all right. Um, well, why don't Chicago you go right first? Why don't you, go first with, you go okay. first with this Chicago game. Okay. Um, you know, I know Nick Foles has bad ribs, but here again, I'd rather take the Super Bowl winning quarterback, uh-huh. uh, the defending Super Bowl champions, mm-hmm. over a quarterback making his first playoff appearance, Mitch Trubisky, second year quarterback on a team that was 5-11 and 11 in 2017. I know they got Khalil Mack, and I understand, um, you know, they are playing inspired ball, but not inspired enough to lay six points. I think the line's an absolute joke, even though Chicago's 7-1 and one at home. I'll say this. Philly, defensively, has a hole, right? They're ranked 30th defensively right. in terms of giving up passing yards. That would matter if Philly was going up against a passer. Right. Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson, some guy, uh, Pat Mahomes, mm-hmm. some guy who's going to test your secondary down the field. Right. Mitch Trubisky's not that guy. Right. Against the Rams at home, the Bears only managed 15 points. So to me, I like Philly here. Um, even, you know, whether you think Philly's going to win the game or not, six points is too many. I like the dog. Let me hear you. Mm-hmm. I like I like Philly and the points, but I think, <laughs> I think Chicago will win the game, despite the fact that they also barely beat the 49ers. I think right. the defense and the fact that it's going to be 38 degrees in Chicago, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I think the over-under is 41. I would pick the under on this one. Mm-hmm. because I And I think Philly's been far too inconsistent. I think if the game was played last year, Philadelphia would win by 20 or 25 points. This year, let's face it, the NFC East hasn't been that strong. They they limped into the playoffs. I think Chicago... Got two teams will, in the playoffs, though. <laughs> they made it, but I think Chicago will win the game, something on the order of like 17 to 13. Okay. But, but, I, but I think six points is way too many. I don't think Chicago scores enough points, especially against a proud team that just won the Super Bowl. I, 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 don't, I don't think Philadelphia, if with Nick Foles kind of banged up, the, the likelihood he's going to go up against one of the best defenses of the NFL and pull out his magic hat from last year doesn't seem too likely to me. Also, well, Philadelphia is pretty banged up. Their offensive line has been banged up. They've had injuries all year long. It's just not their year. So I would, I would take the points in Philadelphia, but I think outright Chicago will win the game. They'll be the only home winner this weekend. Wow. Okay. I, I'm not even sure if they win the game simply because um, their pass rush ferocious, their, right. uh, their defense tough, but Philly is a quick strike team. In other words, Zach Ertz is right. really the top receiving target and he's a tight end, right? Yeah, right. I think guys like Darren Sproles, Right. Uh, another guy who can slip out on a screen pass and do some damage. Um, let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if Philly not only covers, but Philly actually wins the game. I think um, Nick Foles, Alshon Jeffrey was missing in action all year. Right. Nick Foles comes in, suddenly we actually notice him uh, as part of the receiving core. Um Bad ribs, they'll shoot him up with Novocaine or whatever. <laughs> he'll, be, <laughs> he'll be out there. You know the way they are. But, uh, uh, you know, I'll agree. Chicago is having a magical year. I'm sure the fans are going to be supporting the team, and it's going to be rocking. But Mitch Trubisky, I don't trust him. If it's a low-scoring game, I'm going to go with the team that's been winning these close matches, not the 5-11 and team who suddenly Cinderella for a year. You know, five and 11 this year. I think they won 12 or 13. Oh, no, no. Third (laughs) seed, right? Third seed. No, agreed. Top seed this weekend. I'll agree with that. Sure, sure. But I'll guarantee you one thing whoever wins this game is not going to be winning next weekend. This is a one and done. Whoever gets by Sunday is not going to win the next week. Ooh, I'm not sure about that. Um, 
You think I, Philadelphia yeah. or Chicago is going to beat? Who would they play? I guess they could okay, play well, the Rams or the Saints. Right. Chicago's already beaten the Rams. Right. And um, the Rams, Todd Gurley, the knee problem, we don't know how major that is. I can tell you I lost a fantasy pool because Todd Gurley the last few weeks of the season was MIA. Right. And uh, Cooper Cup, you and I have talked about this off camera. Cooper Cup, much more important player than anyone realizes. And he's out. Um, I feel Brandon Cooks. There's a reason why Bill Belichick let him go, why Sean Payton let him go. And both of these teams are, you know, in the mix <laughs> in playoffs, right? Why would you let a superstar guy go? Yeah. Something's not right there. And Jared Goff, um, let's face it, he lost some big games this season. The Bear game, he lost. Um, didn't they also lose to KC or some other team like that? Yeah. Oh, Philly. Uh, Philly. No, no, they the lost to Philly. KC. But I will agree they, with you. They lost to Philly. Mm -hmm. Goff has lost big games. In fact, he lost every big game he played against Stanford. So he's used to losing big games. You know, it's the Berkeley <laughs> curse, right? I mean, Aaron yeah. Rodgers didn't even make the playoffs, right? That's right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. So but I, I don't uh, know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I think the Rams and the Saints will be played pretty well next week, but we'll see. But there's one other game coming up that's locally. Monday Night Football, the end of the college season. I know this is the NFL show. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know who's going to win. I think it's going to be a good game, but the player to watch for me is our local project, Najee Harris who had a big okay. impact last year. Nick Saban approaches these games as a recruiting opportunity. He's going to want to showcase his Bay Area recruit. That's sure. the only reason he's coming out. I don't think he even cares if he wins. He's more focused on recruiting than playing the games at this point of his career. I would expect Najee Harris to, have, to be the player of the game, and which will open up things for Tua. I, I, so I, if Najee has a big game, I think – that will slow down the Clemson defensive line and give Alabama advantage. But I think Clemson and Alabama are as evenly matched as you can get. They're clearly the two oh, best I teams in college football. Right. I have to say, because they're evenly matched, I like Clemson getting the six points. That's a lot of points. A lot That's of points. a lot of points. And I feel Dabo Sweeney is one of the best coaches in the country. Um, yep. I wouldn't be surprised if, given the openings in the NFL, Right. Some NFL team doesn't try to poach him. Maybe. You know, because I think the guy, his life I, is I, pretty good. I mean, I think he's on a run oh, right now. I think he's got young life, kids, too. Mm -hmm. No, his, his life is great. He's certainly a guy who's appreciated on campus. But I will say, this is that rare year right. where some teams uh, with quarterbacks, right? If you believe in Baker Mayfield... Uh -huh. You have Cleveland there, a team that won a lot of games this year, right? Missed the playoffs, but greatly improved. Won like seven they games. They almost beat the Ravens last week. The Ravens barely Arnold made it to in the New playoffs. York City. Right. Right. No, I, I, I like Baker a lot. I think that's why a lot of these guys, Bruce Arians and a bunch of other guys, uh, are talking about the possibility of returning to coaching. So yeah. if I'm Don O'Sweeney, um, most years I would stay where I am, but this year I would think about it, you know. Well, if John Harbaugh leaves, Baltimore wouldn't be the worst place to go. They've got a pretty solid foundation. They drafted well the last few years, and Lamar Jackson, while raw, I think he could work with Dabo. Or maybe Houston. If Houston loses tomorrow... Would he want to hook up with Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt? That would be, there would be worse places to go than Houston. Oh, I got to tell you, too, um, California beer, Ron Rivera, might be out in Carolina. Oh. And David Tepper, deep-pocketed billionaire, yeah. uh, owns the team. So you'd right. be able to front-load contracts and stuff. Um, Cam Newton, if you believe in Cam... And if you're Dabo Sweeney and you want to stay in the South, Carolina yeah, would be a tempting true. job. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not going to be open that often, right? No, this year, true. the job might be open. So, And that Aaron Rodgers character is looking for a coach too, right, in Green Bay? All I could say is you know that if you're in the coaching fraternity, 
and they mentioned the Green Bay Packers, and you're yeah. thinking of Vince Lombardi, right? Yeah. Mike Holgram. We'll we'll have a Bay Area link there. <laughs> good, good. I'm sure. <laughs> no, Mike you know what I'm saying. Uh, I think I think that's something to look at. Also, Arizona, a lot of golf courses. You uh, have Josh Rosen there, another you know young quarterback. Um, you play indoors. You'd be able to pass the ball all over the place. Right. Um, you know, if Dabo wants lifestyle, why not? You know, so food for thought. <laughs> okay. We'll see. It should be a good game Monday, too. And I all these games are good. I of all these five games, the one I'm most confident in is probably the Chargers. I just think they're oh, the best like team the playing this weekend. Right. I like but the Chargers. The mm-hmm. Bears could implode. Mitch Trubisky could choke this game away. I think Matt Nagy is aware of that, though. I think, I think Trubisky is going to be on a short leash. He's not going to be taking a lot of chances. I think that he's going to try to let the defense win that game. Well, I'll say this: I view this year's Bears like I view last year's Rams. Ah, uh, a lot of hype. They right. played at home. Right. I was hearing about a lot of young talent, right? right? A lot of high draft picks, a lot of right. recent additions. And last year, if you recall, Atlanta came in, beat the uh, Rams. I feel this year it's going to be the same type thing where, you know, last year you had Snoop Dogg in the crowd in Los Angeles. This year you might have Common in the crowd yeah. in Chicago. Well, it's a good point because <laughs> Atlanta know. came off a Super Bowl even though they lost and won. They weren't having their best year, but they would have put one game. So Philadelphia could put one game together. I right. just think yeah. – I just think – Atlanta, I think, was playing better last year than Philadelphia's played this year. Philadelphia has been a yo-yo team. So the Bears may be their best chance to win, but that I, I, I just think in Chicago, I think that defense is good enough to hold. It, it, it'll probably come down to turnovers. If Trubisky throws two or three interceptions, that could torpedo the Bears pretty easily. Okay. Are you concerned about the fact that, just thinking ahead to next week, yeah. uh, Drew Brees uh, barely gets to – 4,000 yards, right? I'm not even sure if he got to 4,000 yards. Right. Um, you know, the Saints did have some games yeah. where they were struggling. Uh, Tampa Bay looked awfully good against the Saints. Right. Um, beat them the first time, I believe. Second time, they were up uh, in the first half. Are you at all concerned about the fact that uh, the Saints really haven't been putting up the offensive numbers that they did early in the season? And that um, the Rams certainly aren't the team they were in September. Do you feel either of those teams might be vulnerable next week, or do you feel it's a foregone conclusion that the NFC Championship game is going to be the one versus the two? I think it depends who they're playing. I think the Rams can play with anybody, and I think their motivation is having lost that game last year after having the bye. Seattle... I think could give Seattle would play New Orleans if they went, correct? Because they're the number right. I believe five. so. Well, actually, no. It could be the Eagles. It's going to be either the Eagles or Seattle or it would be right. If, another... if the Eagles win, I believe they would necessarily play New Orleans, right? And I think Dallas would play New Orleans too, right? It's good. So it's going to be Dallas, Seattle, or Philadelphia. Those are the three teams that could play the Saints. Because the Bears would play the Rams if they win, right? Right. The Bears definitely would play the Rams. Right. But um, Philly, I believe, is the lower seed. Uh, Dallas won the division, right? right. That's, so that's Philly... what I mean. But, but mm-hmm. since New Orleans is the number one seed, if Philly wins, they go to New Orleans, right? Oh, got you. Okay. Okay. So it's. So, so they, I don't, New Orleans, they don't receive. New Orleans' toughest matchup would be Dallas because Dallas played very well against them. I think Seattle would give them a good game, too. I don't think Philadelphia has been consistent enough to scare Duke, Drew Brees, and the Saints who have a weak rest. I, I'm sure they're going to play well. The Rams, I don't think they really care who they play, to be honest. I think. They are thinking about losing that game last year. I think they're going to be healthier. I think that they're going to play a good game. Okay. Jared Goff has yet to win a playoff game. 
And uh, well, he's only I'm had he's, he's zero and one. He's zero and one. That's true. He's zero and one, but he was favored in that game. No, right. No. That game was at home. That game was at home, and I do feel that it's a big hurdle. You know, I'll say this too with the Saints. Um, Michael Thomas isn't an outside wide receiver. Right. Right. The guys on the outside, Traquan Smith, I'm not fully convinced. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. All righty, sir. I'll tell you what. I know I've taken up your afternoon. Any last words? Well, from the AFC perspective, I think we both have talked in the past about New England being a solid experience team, but not as deep on defense this year, and Kansas City with that first-year quarterback, even though it's his second year in the league. First-year starter. First playoff game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, those teams, playoffs are different. I know the Patriots will be at home, but their defense is nowhere near what it's been in the past. So I think next weekend is also going to be a slate of four games that are going to be a lot of close point spreads, and we'll just see what happens after this weekend. Having the week off is huge this time of year. I mean, it's huge to get that by, so... I think the teams playing at home next week are going to have a lot better chance to hold the home field advantage than the teams this weekend. I think the road teams are going to do really well this weekend as we kind of project it. Yeah, I think on an NFL futures market, the uh, Patriots are the play. I think I think KC is overrated. Yeah. I think, um, you know, with the Patriots, I understand that Gronk isn't looking like Gronk. Right. Uh, Josh Gordon is done. He's out. Right. Um, Brady's going to have to be throwing the ball to people like Chris Hogan right. and what have you. But um, Tom Brady is a guy who hasn't been relying on the personnel around him. Right. And I'll say Josh Gordon wasn't a thousand yard receiver. He, he really wasn't having that great a year. Wrong. Right. Um, Brady will find a way to get some throws to Gronk, but he and also Gronk, has a Gronk had and the Smith. week off, too. I think that he's right. going to be as healthy as he's been all year. And I think they'll play a good game. I'm not sure they can win two tough games, and they're going to have tough games next week. Agreed. Like, Agreed. I think the way we projected it, it looks like they would be playing the Chargers. If the Colts and the Chargers win, I think the Chargers going into – they're a good road team. That's going to be a tough game. And then Agreed. by the same token, if the Colts do pull it off and they're playing Kansas City, I don't think Andrew Luck's going to be intimidated going to Kansas City. No, right. So right. I think next week's games, if the wild cards win this weekend, I think they're going to be very competitive games. I think Casey's defense is something they can't hide. Right. And, um, you know, for several weeks, Pat Mahomes did not throw a pick. Right. Then he started throwing picks. If you look at the number of picks he threw after week four, right. um, you know, some of the bloom is off the rose. Well, and Kareem Hunt's gone, as you mentioned when we talked yesterday. Right. Without, without a top running back, that's a different offense now than it was. That's a t totally different offense. And I think Andy Reid's the kind of coach who, in September... He surprises you with a lot of new plays. Right. Um, I believe in December, you know what he's going to do. Right. And I think um, t the kind of teams we're talking about will be ready for him. So I actually do feel that Andrew Luck would have a shot on KC. I right. think the franchise is cursed. You mentioned Marty Schottenheimer in an oh, earlier yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that that franchise, they always had great records during the regular season. Right. Then they would show up in the postseason. And, and I think that uh, if they're down at halftime, people are going to panic. Yeah. You know, it's not, uh, not going to be a good scene in, in KC. I'll be surprised if KC comes out of the AFC. But, um, you know, we will see. I'll agree. The Chargers conceivably could take out New England. Yeah. Um, if they do, I think they take out KC. But I'll agree that would be a lot of road games in a row. But we've talked about the fact that the Chargers were 7-1 and one on the road and really don't have a They're a road field. team. And right. they're going to be a road team even when they get their new stadium. They're going to be the second tenant in the palace of... Wherever Inglewood. that guy's building that 
thing. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Is that kind of an Inglewood area or Hollywood Park? Right. It, it's going to be right where the Fabulous Forum was. Yeah. Ah, or yeah. Is right around there. Yeah. The, the Clippers want to move to that part yes. of LA, too. The, and the if Dan the City Crosby. Planning Commission has some sense, they'll let them. You know what I mean? Make yeah, it a No, I think it would be plans. good for the Clippers to separate from the Lakers. Staples I, is too big anyway. I think a more intimate arena would be better for home court advantage. Right. I think Staples is lame. I'm not a big fan of downtown LA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not saying Inglewood is, is a total party either, but at yeah. least Inglewood gives you what you have in Arizona, that feeling of, hey, we're going to the sports arena part of town. Right. And you can build kind of like a bar system around right. there and have people hanging out and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? As long as the Clippers don't get KD, I'll be happy. Everyone wants to steal the Warriors, but they can't seem to win many games. Last night, the Rockets. Oh. James Harden's on fire right now. He is the MVP right now. He's he's the best player in the league today. Did you see that last night, Rich? You see that stuff. The uh, you know <laughs> that Harden closing out. Yeah, didn't get the chance to watch it. All right, it uh, it says poor connection. Switch to audio only. So I'll right. tell you what. I'm gonna post this on YouTube. Uh, viewers can also find this at Fremont Outpost. Is that right? The FremontOutpost.com. FremontOutpost.com. All right, and All right. Uh, we're taking a lot of underdogs here. We think it's that kind of week. It's coming down to Chicago and Philadelphia. That's where we have a difference of opinion. We'll see what happens. That'll be the. I think, is that the last game of the weekend? Or second to last. I'm not sure. Hey, you need to start respecting Pac-12 quarterbacks. Nick Foles, baby. <laughs> Forgot about that. That's true. <laughs> That's a, a difference wild. maker here, right? He's a wildcat. My daughter goes to Arizona, too. I should have known that. Hey, uh, come so on. Uh, against Mitch Trubisky? I'm, I'm horrified here that you're picking the Mitch Trubisky guy. But... I'm, I'm picking dis the Bears despite Mitch Trubisky. I think he's going to be... <laughs> Self-contained. If he can just Alex Smith his way through this game, they could win. Okay. I think a great defense could bully a team that doesn't have a lot of experience in the playoffs. That's They're not going to bully a proud defending champion. That's the way I look at it. So oh. <laughs> That's why they play the games, Rich D. All right. We'll All see. right. Okay. I'm going to hit the stop recording button. Let's see if it continues the convo, though.